Thank you for calling Petco Grooming. This is Teresa. How can I help you? Hi, Teresa. This is Steve Day from the corporate office with Petco. Hi, Steve. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Very good. Thank you. That's what can I help you good with? To hear. Um, I was just trying to find out uh, what the names of the dogs are there in the grooming department. Currently, uh, Diesel, uh, Henry, Duke, Ruby, Killer, and Carmela. Okay, um, it, it's Killer. That's the one that uh, I needed to have a quick word with. Oh, sure. Because I wasn't sure if it was still there. Could you put the phone up to the dog's ear and I just need to ask him a question? Um, okay, I'll, I'll have to bring him out here in the salon area. Okay, that's fine. Okay, hold on. Thank you. Uh oh. <laughs> Shit. Okay, so here he is. Okay, are you putting the phone up to his ear? Killer. Killer? Who's the good boy, killer? Who's the good boy? It's you, killer. You're the you're the good boy. Yes, you are, killer. You're such the good boy. You're a good boy, killer. He's not quite sure what to do. <laughs> oh, did, did he respond at all? Well, he yeah, he perked his ears up and he kept turning like he didn't know it was coming from the phone. Oh, yeah, I think he doesn't quite understand that because, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Killer is actually a robot dog. A robot dog? Yeah, he, he's called a, a surveillance dog. And uh, he was sent there by Petco Corporate to keep an eye on, you know, just make sure nothing funny is happening there in the grooming department. Making sure no dogs have been oh, abused. That's, that's funny. I've done Killer several times. Yeah, yeah. The, like, he comes in all the time just to keep an eye on things and make sure everything's good. And you guys have got good ratings there. Everything's looking pretty good. Five oh, well, thank you so much. Five stars. But uh, it looks like Killer's malfunctioning. And I was trying to, uh, I was trying to reset him with the voice commands, but I guess he can't hear it oh. over, over the phone. <laughs> um, could, well, I wonder if he could hear on speaker. Let me try well, that. Well, well, maybe, maybe could you just say the the words to him? Just ask him who a good boy is and say yes, he is and all that. Like, but say it real loud. Say what? Just, just uh, ask him who a good boy is and say that it's him. He's the good boy, and yes, he is. If you could just say that real loud, I think that'll reset him. Oh, okay. Killer, who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Are you a good boy, Killer? Are you a good boy? <laughs> He's just kind of wondering what's going on. Did, did he beep? Mm -hmm. Did he beep and like test out all of his limbs? <laughs> yeah, he seems to be functioning fine. Well, yeah, but no, I think like we're not getting a GPS reading on him. Do you think? Um, could you spin him around three times? That'll recalibrate the GPS coordinates. Come here, pumpkin. Come here. Three times, though. It's got to be three, maybe five. Come here, killer. Oh, slow down, pumpkin. It's okay. Killer. <laughs> He's like, it's slippery on this floor. Oh, yeah. Be careful. Don't hurt him. He's very valuable. He's <laughs> worth over uh, $500,000. The robotic parts, you know. <laughs> so how was that? Um, I'm not getting a GPS reading yet, but you have to, can you lick your finger and stick it in his left ear? Oh, okay. Now we're getting a little extensive here. <laughs> well, at least I didn't say his butt, right? <laughs> no, seriously, because the, the saliva, you know, like a uh, uh, liquid, it conducts electricity. And if you put it in his ear, it'll, it'll hit these two terminals and it'll set the reset thing. It'll start the reset process and it'll recalibrate. Okay, now I think you're pulling my leg. Oh, here. No, I wouldn't do that. This is Steve Day from the corporate office. This is something we have to do, and we don't, we don't know where the owner is, killer's owner, quote unquote owner, owner aka. Oh, uh, she is at a doctor's appointment. Well, that's what she says. She just tells you that stuff to to appear like a real a real customer. The the lady that okay. brings killer in, she's a robot too. Oh my lord! <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Okay, Steve, you're pulling my leg now. No. What now? I am. No, I'm completely serious. Yep. <laughs> and um. Yep. yep. Oh, hold on, pumpkin. Hold on. Yeah, just just. Hold on. Well, he's trying to get away because you're not doing the reset. Like you already did the the 360 degrees. 
times three. Gummer but pumpkin. You got to put your finger in left ear and make sure it's very wet. Okay, finger in left ear. Are you really doing this? I just did it. Because I have to. Oh, oh, there it goes. Oh, bloop, bloop, bloop. Yeah, green lights across the board. Looks like. Yeah, there we go. That, that's the green light across the board noise. It, it worked. He's reset. He, he's calibrated. I can see you through his eyes. I'm looking at the screen right now, and I see you. You're, you're wearing the, the smock, right? Yes, I am. Yep. <laughs> I see you. Hi. Wave hello. Are you, oh, yep. There you are. It's a little delayed. I, I didn't see it at first. <laughs> Oh goodness. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for the help, ma'am, and uh um yeah, it, it, he, he seems to be just fine. Oh, okay, you have a wonderful day. Everything's working a okay. Green lights across the board. Good deal. Okay, okay thank you so much. Have a nice day, ma'am. Thank you. You too. Thanks <laughs> for being Bye -bye. a part of the team. Snowplow show. Snowplow show. Snow plow show, snow plow show. Okay, bitch. Snow plow show. Roy. W what? W Roy. Okay, fucking dog. Steve Dave. Fucking dog. Oh, fuck you, lady. Turnwinder? <laughs> okay. Robo, bo, shaw, bo, 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 Roy, long shits on the toilet. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Hello. This is the grooming manager. How can I help you? Hello. Who, 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 who the hell are you? Steve Dave. No, 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 no. I, you're not making a lot of sense. Sense, sense, sense. My wiener. What the fuck is that? You don't say that word. You are some kind of asshole. asshole. Bob Dabalina. <laughs> Bob Dabalina. What's this? Have you ever been fucked in the ass? How dare you talk to this dog like that? Heard Finder? Fucked in the ass. Hello. Ma'am. Goodbye. Dabalina. Ma'am. Ma'am. Hello. Goodbye. Dabalina. This is Sensei Doug. What? Sensei fucking Doug. Who's the good boy? Who's the good boy? Who's the good boy, Westy? Is it you? Who's the good boy? Who's the good boy? Who's the good boy, Westy? Is it you? Are you the good boy, Westy? Roy. Steve Dave Rock Bob Dabalina, go suck a dick. Roy, Steve Dave Rock Bob Dabalina, go suck a dick. Listen, Westy, you little shit. <laughs> Turnwinder? Okay. I think you're full of shit. I think you're full of shit. Cactus, 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 motherfucker. Hello, everybody. You're listening to episode 500 of the Snowplow Show. I'm your host, Roy, a.k.a. Brad, a.k.a. Arby. You know, a bunch of names after six years of doing this show. I still can't decide on a name to use all the time, so I'm just random about it. I'm just going to confuse everyone forever, I guess. Anyway, today's episode is brought to you by Nikki D, The Anti-Chris, Frank Collar, Vandershire, and Not Dan. Those are five people who are supporting the PLA through the Patreon. Thanks, you guys, for supporting the show and keeping the show happening on a semi-regular basis. Not counting the past few weeks where I've been out of town a whole bunch. That part doesn't count, but usually the show happens on a regular basis. Anyway, holy shit, this is episode 500. Not only are there 500 patrons on the Phone Losers Patreon page, but now there's 500 episodes going all the way back to 2012. That's pretty crazy. I don't usually last this long with shows. I usually get bored and quit forever and then start up a new show a year later. But not this time. Thanks to you guys supporting the show and forcing me to just keep going forever. We've reached 500 episodes. Thanks, everyone. And to celebrate today's 500th episode, I'm going to do nothing original, nothing new. I'm just going to play a bunch of old shit. It's like I'm giving a big fuck you to the entire audience. You're welcome for this. A few months ago, I asked around on the PLA Reddit and on the PLA Facebook page, and I said, hey guys, how about I just do a best of show for the 500th episode, and whenever a new listener comes along and says, hey, what's a good show to start out on? Everybody can say episode 500, because that's the one with all the best calls in it. So I asked all of you what would be the best calls to put in a best of show, and I got a ton of suggestions here. I have narrowed them down to, I don't know, 20 or 30 suggestions which 
I won't be able to do all of these because I don't want the show to be five hours long. I'm hoping to keep it under 90 minutes, maybe even shorter, because nobody likes long shows. We got to make the Cornerstone episode easily listenable, not like this gigantic chore for people to listen to the entire thing. So I've got a big old list here, and I'm going to play a bunch of calls that the listeners suggested that I play on this episode. And that's pretty much all we're going to do on this episode. Play a bunch of old calls that you've already heard. Sounds like a great time, right? So if you're new to this show, you should probably know that most of the show is prank calls, or maybe half of the show is prank calls. The other half is just me babbling about shit, reading news stories that involve telephones, talking about phone losers of America stuff, and listening to listener voicemails, which we may or may not do on this episode. Maybe I'll just do a couple at the end. But I make prank calls to people, and not just any old prank calls. I do awesome prank calls to people. I don't just call up people and say fuck you to them, so they'll yell back at me. No, I call up people, and I present them with various wacky situations. And the goal is to just kind of confuse the crap out of them, make them question reality, give them fun stories to tell their friends and families. Sometimes they get really pissed off and yell at me a bunch. But I think most of the time they just kind of hang up the phone and wonder if they're dreaming or not. So let's get started with that. I'm looking through the list here. I need to find the perfect call to start this all out with. That beginning call you heard with the dog and the who's a good boy and all that crap. That doesn't count as the beginning call. See, that's just an old call that I play on the beginning of every show to entice people to keep listening through my long, boring intros. It's a trick, you see. Anyway, here's a good one. Uh, This one is called Yelp Check-In Prank Counterfeit Bills. I don't know if Yelp is still really a thing exactly. I guess it probably is, but I don't know. Does anyone use this stuff still? It's one of those apps. They were like the original app where you would check into a restaurant or whatever, wherever you were going. And that way, everybody knows where you are. What could go wrong, right? So back in the phone show days, we came up with the brilliant idea of calling up the places that they checked in at. And since their name is right there on their Yelp account, we have the employee page that person to get on the phone. And here's one. I don't know where this place is going to be. I'm just playing this straight off the YouTube video. And hopefully this is a funny call. Starbucks at 19. This is when I'm Ah, it's a Starbucks. Okay. Yep. Hello, could I page a customer to come to the phone? His name's Michael. Um, we don't really have a thing. I mean, I can call out his name and see if he responds. Oh, yeah. Do you know what he looks, what does he look like? Oh, um, he's kind of darker skin and wears a cap all the time. Dear yeah. Michael, does he have on a green sweater? Probably. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what he's wearing today. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, that's your name. Uh, it's Kevin. Kevin? Do you know a Kevin? Okay, one second. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hi, is this Michael? Yeah, this is he. Oh, hey, this is Gary from the corporate office with Starbucks. Yeah, hi. Hey, uh, yeah, we we uh, just got an alert because uh, the security cameras picked up on your face, and there's sensors in the doors as you walk in, and we can see that you're carrying counterfeit money. Am I? Yes, yes. Uh, do you have a, a 10 or a $20 bill in there? Uh, I it, do. It, it seems like one of them are counterfeit. Oh, okay. Can you take that out and look at it? Maybe check for the gold foil stripe? I have a lot of 20s because I'm about to deposit money. It's from my tips from yesterday. Oh, I think one of those must be counterfeit. Like, do any of them feel counterfeit? Um, I feel uncomfortable taking out a lot of the the money in front of everyone. Oh, no, the the girl there, she'll protect you. Oh. (laughs) Okay, so what what should I do? Uh, We need you to rip it all, all in half. And if it rips... That means it's counterfeit. If it doesn't rip, then it's okay. Um, what am I looking for? Um, well, there's a gold foil stripe, but that doesn't really matter anymore because counterfeiters have figured out how to put the foil stripes in there. Uh, like, can you just take the one from the top of the stack and try and rip it in half? Because it's okay. You can just tape it back together, right? But it rips. Okay. Did you rip it all the way? Because it has to rip through the center. Wait, is it the top one, or I think what am I could, trying to do? It could I, don't be the, I have a bunch of 20s. It could be the top I one. Rip, because, I don't want to rip a 20 that's actually real money. Oh, no, it won't rip if it's real, because uh, it will, it'll stop in the middle. It's like a protection scheme that uh, we've done recently with money here at the government. I don't know what to do right now. Yeah, yeah, just rip the top one, because that's where the, we're getting the strongest signal, and we're looking on the security okay. camera, and it looks like it could be fake. Okay, so if it rips all the way through, then it's fake. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if, it, okay. if it's real, you could just tape it together. It's no big deal. Okay, sounds good. Did, did it rip? Sure. Does it rip? Yeah. Did, like, did you rip it all the way through, all the way down? Yeah, I did. Like, completely in half? 
And half. So you have like two halves of 20s in each hand? Correct. Oh my god, that's hilarious. No, look, I, I'm just, I'm bored here at the corporate office with Starbucks, and I thought it'd be funny to make a customer rip up their money. Oh my god. Okay. But, but you know, for the trouble, we're going to give you a free uh, mocha, whatever you get. Whatever we sell at this. I already have a drink, so you just oh. made me rip a $20 bill. <laughs> okay, we'll give you a coupon. Uh, what's, what, <laughs> okay. what's, the cash, what's the cashier's name there? Uh, I don't know. Hold on. Oh, God. You should know your cashier's names. Your, your barista, I mean. Uh, okay. What's your name? Um, I, it's from the corporate office. I don't know. Lynette. <laughs> oh, great. Lynette. Yeah, she's our top barista there. Uh, she's going to give you a, a uh, free gift card for 800 For how much? 800 coffees. Okay. Eight, 800 separate drinks. That comes out to about um, like a billion dollars. Oh my god. Yeah, that's what you get. Like, uh, yeah, just let her know. It, it was the, the test, the trick, our prank thing. We're doing like a new prank show. Like a like a reality <laughs> reality punked type show where we just we record off of the the video cameras. Can you wave to the camera and say hi? This is Michael. Where are where, what cameras? They're they're everywhere. Like they're hidden. They're like really tiny button cams. But hi. Yeah, yeah. Just wave. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Look, if, so if, should I give the phone back to Lynette? Yeah, but listen, if you want a second gift card. If it, we'll give you a second gift card for another 800 coffees if you rip another bill. You're kidding me. No, I'm no. going to do it because yeah. I can take the $20 back. Yeah, yeah, do it. Just do it. Can, can, can I you, gift it to someone else? Well, can you rip it by the phone so we hear it rip? I just ripped it. Oh, well, we didn't hear it. Can you rip it next to the phone so we hear it? I no. already did. No, another one, though, because you said you have a bunch. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to tape all these 20s later. Are you ready? Okay, yeah. <laughs> That was hilarious. Oh my gosh, you're the best, Michael. Well, what uh, else do you want me to do? Oh, no, that's... Um, can you rip off your shirt and just... No, I'm not just, ripping off my shirt. Like, do lasso in the air with your shirt and be like, woo, woo. No, I'm done. We're done here. <laughs> it's for the show. You're going to be famous on television. I don't, I don't need it. I'm already famous. Can you take a half of one of those bills and wipe your ass with it? No, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> You're well, ridiculous. Listen, enjoy your um, 1,600 free cu- drinks. Okay. Should I give this phone 42. Back to yeah, just go ahead and give it to her. All right, cool. There you go. Thank you. Are you sure? Hello? Oh, hi. Um, yeah, that wasn't the right guy. No? No, it was somebody else. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah I thought, I thought my, yeah, my friend's supposed to be in there, but I guess he's not there. Okay. So there you go. There's call number one. That guy at Starbucks, he was just there to get a coffee. And what does he leave with? $60 and ripped up $20 bills. And he doesn't even get 1,600 free coffees like he was hoping to get. What a greedy person. What a greedy customer. So that's one of the things we did in the earlier shows, the earlier snowplow shows. It seems like when I try those anymore, it's just really hard to get a hold of people. I try various services like Yelp and Foursquare and just um, Twitter. Doesn't Twitter let you check in now? I don't know. I need to give those a try again. Those were a lot of fun. Similar to the Yelp and Foursquare check-in calls is the complainer calls. I think those started happening back around the same time as the check-in calls. And it took advantage of people's need to complain about everything on Twitter. And this one definitely still works. You just get on Twitter and you search for a string such as horrible customer service, terrible customer service, uh, shitty customer service, you know, the things that people typically say whenever they're pissed at some company. Or you can also go to a company's Facebook page, like I did on this next call. And for some reason, a lot of companies out there, they will let customers write things on their page. And it's always just a bunch of horrible complaints about them talking about what a terrible company they are like this one i'm pretty sure i found this on the comcast facebook page this lady was complaining that comcast wouldn't get rid of her call waiting so i called her up and pretended to be comcast and here's the call joanne has posted on the comcast xfinity page and she wants to know why does it take six phone call requests to have comcast call waiting removed from the phone hello hello joanne Who's this? Uh, this is Gary from Comcast. 
Yes. And uh, I understand you're wanting to sign up for our uh, our caller ID and call waiting package. What? Are you guys <laughs> cracked? What? You must be smoking something. It's taken five phone calls and one follow-up phone call to get you guys to listen and learn and get caller ID, caller, call waiting off my phone. Oh, no, I just put it back you on. Have made me, you have made me so aggravated. I just, put a caller, I just put call waiting back on for you. You're not supposed to have done that. Oh, no, it showed on the report. I, I have the report right here. No, get it the fuck off. Please. It is the most rude, arrogant, inconsiderate, thoughtless, and any other word you want to use. I have been interrupted when I am talking to my doctor, to my attorney, well, that's what it's to for. my children. It's so people can get call you. Get off my phone. Listen, what if you were on the phone and you had an important call from a telemarketer? I you don't need- care. You need get to get off. Oh, I, I, I'm going to put um, a double call waiting on your line. Well, thank and you very much. I'll sue you. Goodbye. No, Gary. you won't. No, you won't. How did she know I was on crack? That's what I want to know. What? I'm putting call waiting on your line five times. Call Mazel wait- tov. You are so. Comcast is so piss poor. It is amazing. Goodbye. But, ma'am. That's an example of a complainer call. There's a bunch of those on our YouTube at youtube.com slash phone losers of America. I think both of those were submitted by I Regret Jumping. And I don't remember who submitted all of these things. I just happen to remember that those two were submitted by I Regret Jumping. So thanks, I Regret Jumping. You're the only one that gets any credit in this show. Nobody else gets credit. Just you. About a year ago, I went through this weird phase of calling up people and pretending to be an astronaut on the International Space Station. And I did several shows where I called up people as an astronaut and got them to do weird things. Like we called up a gas station. I remember this was on a live show because a listener in the chat room told me to do this. They told me to convince somebody that worked at a gas station that I was going to be lowering a hose from the International Space Station and I needed them to fill it up with unleaded or whatever. And I remember she actually went outside and waited for that hose to come out of the sky so she could fill up the International Space Station with gasoline. But I'm not going to play that one. I'm going to play this one. I think this one is funny. As far as I can remember, I think this is where I call up uh, an apartment building. Oh yeah, and of course I have to do these sound effects in the background of the Enterprise on Star Trek to make it sound more realistic, you know? Thank you for calling apartments. This is Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Uh, This is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton. I'm calling you from the International Space Station up in space. You know? No, you're not. Yeah, I am. What are you talking about? No, I'm not. Why would I lie about that? (laughs) How can I help you? Uh, Well, I dropped a socket wrench. I was doing a spacewalk, and I think it landed in the like the courtyard area of your apartments there. Could you go check? Seriously? Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. It's so inconvenient. It's like a it's like a standard size socket wrench, and it um it says property of NASA on it. It's like stamped on it. This isn't a joke? No, not at all. I, why would I joke about this? Oh, it, because it just totally sounds like a joking phone call. Oh, no, 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 ma'am. No, not at all. It's just, uh, <laughs> you, it, it's like property of NASA. I don't think, you, you know, like, I, I don't want someone to pick it up and it ends up on eBay. It's like oh, okay. made of titanium and yeah. <laughs> got okay. probably space radiation um, on it. Yeah, I'll have to just do a, do a walk around, walk around my premises. Okay. And then how can I reach you to oh, let hold. you know that I found it? I can hold. Oh, it's going to take me longer. It's four buildings on this property. Oh, I see. Okay. It's probably glowing. You know, it's been through space. It survived the, the re-entry and everything, and it's probably red hot and, and is uh, radioactive. But it's not dangerous. Okay. It's just radioactive. Don't, 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 okay, so don't. obviously don't touch it. Oh, no, you can touch it. Maybe just uh, pick it up with a handkerchief or something. Um, okay. All right. I, I could just call back, like, um, I don't know, like an hour or something? Um, yeah, maybe like in 20 minutes or so, that should be just fine. Okay. Well, thank you so much for checking, ma'am. Yeah, and what's your name again? Uh, my name is Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton from the International Space Station. Okay. 
Well, you guys can really zero in then and see where things fall then, huh? Yeah, yeah. I was looking through binoculars, and I can see straight down there, and I saw that it landed. It's like right in the middle of the buildings, like how the buildings are arranged. It's kind of like right in the center, kind of. Okay. Um, yeah, give me... Uh, so it's okay to touch it even though it's radioactive? I don't know if I feel comfortable. Oh, no, touching. it's a different kind of radiation. No, it's fine. Oh, okay. it, it's like the kind of radiation that you get from turning on, on an incandescent light bulb. Okay. So it's <laughs> okay. fine. It's fine. It's probably all cooled off by now anyway. <laughs> okay, I'll go uh, take a look, and if you just want to give me a call back in 20 minutes, I'll let you know if I found it. Okay, 20 minutes. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, what was your okay. name again? My name's Jessica. Okay, thank you so much, Jessica. Yep, bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, it's been, uh, looks like, 25 minutes now since I talked to Jessica. So let's give Jessica a quick call, see if she found my socket wrench yet. Thank you for calling my apartment. This is Jessica. Hey, Jessica. It's Lieutenant Tuck Pendleton again from the space station. Yeah, hi. Hey, did you happen to find that socket wrench? I did not at all. Oh, man. Huh, okay. Yeah, unless, yeah, and, I, and I walked every, you know, around all of our buildings. Yeah. Unless you can let me know exactly where you're seeing it, then I can go see it. Oh, uh, we've we've uh, at this point we've passed by, so I can't even look down there anymore with my binoculars. But it seemed like it was out in the middle. I wonder if maybe a resident found it and picked it up. M maybe you yeah, could. I, I, maybe you could send out not, emails or a poster or something. Like ask all the residents if they found NASA's socket wrench. <laughs> um, it says. I, I yeah I <clears throat> I looked around and just didn't didn't see anything. Okay, well, you know, if, yeah. if it turns up, do you think you could give me a call back at the number on your caller ID? Um, I don't have a caller ID. Oh, okay. Well, I have the number here. Okay. Um, it's uh, area code 321, and then uh, uh, the phone number is 420-6969. That, that's the direct line to the space station. Just ask for Tuck. Oh, okay. Um, when you were looking down, did um, it wasn't in a parking lot? You said it was in the grass. Yeah, I thought it was in the. It looked like grass from up here. Yeah. Okay. Because I yeah I checked all of my grass areas. Yeah, it's hard to this. tell because from space grass is blue and and parking lots are more of like a, a green gray. So it's, it's hard to tell oh. the difference sometimes. Okay. Okay. Well, th um, thank you so much for yeah. looking. I really appreciate the help. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Sorry I, I couldn't locate it oh, for it's, you. Oh, it's no problem. E either way, you you served your country, and we're very <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> okay, well, have fun up in space. Okay, thanks. Have fun okay. down there not being in space. It must be boring. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Pendleton, away! So that lady who started out saying that I'm completely full of crap and this must be a joke call, completely believed me. She walked around her apartment complex and looked for a space wrench. How funny is that? What the hell's wrong with people? It's almost like you can convince people to do anything over the phone. Anything at all. Like this next lady that works at a Subway. I called up a bunch of companies. I think a bunch of Starbucks, a bunch of Subways. I'm pretty sure maybe 7-Elevens or Circle Ks or something. And I told them all that I was with the corporate office and we were doing a new promotional slogan contest and this was a live show i think where the chat room was giving me slogans to tell people to say i don't think this is making any sense i just need to play the call so that's what we're going to do right now here is a call that i made to a subway employee good afternoon subway hi this is steve day from the corporate office with subway yes sir and we're doing the uh the the radio the employee radio auditions for the radio spot that's going to be uh out this summer do you want to do a okay. quick audition? You might get to be on the radio. Oh, nice. Yeah, you want to okay. try a few lines, and uh, they might end up on the radio? And I might end up on the radio? Yep. All right. Yep. They're, they're just, uh, we're sending them all in, and they're just going to use their favorite ones. Just use their favorite ones? Yep. Yep. Good repeating there. And you can, you can okay. use your own voice. You can do a cartoon voice. You can do a Brooklyn accent. Do hmm. anything you want. You want to give it a try? Sure. All right. You ready? Yep. So uh, here's the line for the first one. It's uh, Subway, the best subs since Pearl Harbor. You want me to do that now? Yeah, yep, whenever you're ready. Okay. <clears throat> the best subs since Pearl Harbor. All right, you want to try a different one? 
sure. That was great. <laughs> well, what did that lady say? Oh, she's just my coworker. Oh, give her, give her snake eyes. What's that? Give, give her like a side glance so she shuts up. Okay. All right. Next, we have one by I Regret Jumping. It's, here it is. Subway, we want to be inside you. Subway, we want to be inside you. Great. Um, and the next one, Mob 7, it's a uh, Subway, now serving footlongs from prison. Subway, now serving footlongs from prison. That's a reference to Jared, you know, because he's in prison now. Right. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> Uh, Subway, try our new peanut butter and jelly sub. Subway, try our new peanut butter and jelly sub. Uh, <laughs> hey, tell her to shut up. Tell her to just shut up. <laughs> hey, does she want to try any? Do you want you want to try? It's for Subway. It's for commercials. No. She's like, no. <laughs> oh, tell her to tell her to quit laughing then. Okay. <laughs> All right. Subway, Jared is back and he's been castrated. Jared is back, and he's been castrated. Yep. <laughs> I noticed she hasn't shut up yet. Can you take a piece of bread and just, won't. just th throw it at her head <laughs> or something? She's laughing at me. All right. Sorry. Uh, Subway, sorry, no public restrooms. Subway, sorry, no public restrooms. Um, Subway, fuck you, I'm eating. Can I really say that? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's for the internet version of the commercial. <laughs> okay. Subway, fuck you, I'm eating. Yeah, but no, you said it as a question. You have to, like, can you really yell okay. it out, though? Like, yell it out to the whole store. Fuck you, I'm eating. Okay. Fuck you, I'm eating. All right, that was great. <laughs> Eat fresh and don't have sex with minors. Eat fresh and don't have sex with minors. I am not really from the corporate office, and all of this is fake and won't be on the radio. You're not really from the corporate office, and this is fake, and you're, it won't really be on the radio. Oh, no, no. No, you have to say it like I. It's, it's one of the slogans for the radio. I'm not really oh, from okay. the corporate office, and this is all fake, and it won't really be on the radio. I am not from corporate office, and this is fake, and this will not be on the radio. Yep. Uh, Subway. <laughs> Sorry. Subway. Is that a mole? Is that a mole, or is it cancer? Subway, is that a mole or is it cancer? Subway, more gullible than Jimmy John's. Subway, more gullible than Jimmy John's. Subway, <clears throat> sorry. Subway, the <laughs> N-word is for nutritious. Subway, where the N-word is for nutritious. Yep, oh, this is so great. I hope that you, <laughs> they, they use some of these. Um, let's see, I'll, I regret jumping. Subway, because Panera is too far away. Subway, because Panera is too far away. Um, Subway, we believe everyone's from corporate. Subway, we believe everyone's from corporate. Subway, Bill Cosby did, no did nothing wrong. <laughs> Subway, Bill Cosby did nothing wrong. You're like a parrot. This is awesome. <laughs> Subway, our commercials aren't as annoying as Jimmy John's. Subway, our commercials are not as annoying as Jimmy John's. Subway, not buttway. <laughs> Subway, not buttway. Subway, try to beat our meat. <laughs> Subway, try to beat our meat. <laughs> Subway, our footlongs are in the back. Subway, our footlongs are in the back. No, in the back, you know, like... like in the back, sorry, you know, like, it's like, hard like butt sex. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, you want me to say that again? Oh, yeah, Subway, our footlongs are in the back. Subway, our footlongs are in the back. Or wait, no, how about this? Subway, we like it in the back. Mm -mm -mm. Subway, we like it in the back. Mm -mm -mm. Sub <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Roger Dodger, he says, Subway, where the workers are moist and the bread isn't. <laughs> Subway, where the workers are moist and the bread isn't. Subway, visit snowplowshow.com. Subway, visit snowplowshow.com. Subway, this is just a wacky morning radio prank. I'm not really from corporate. Subway, this is a wacky morning radio show. I'm not really from corporate. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, Subway, quit fucking looking at me. Subway, quit fucking looking at me. 
Subway, support our Patreon. Patreon.com slash phone losers. Subway, support our Patreon. Patreon.com slash phone losers. Yep. Subway, I shouldn't be trusted with your credit card. Subway, I shouldn't be trusted with your credit card. Subway, we employ parrots. A subway, we employ parrots? Yeah, yeah, that was good. Okay. Uh, subway, hang up the phone, motherfucker. Subway, hang up the phone, motherfucker. All right, and uh, Chicken Slap, he wants you to do a mic drop. Can you just drop the phone on the floor? Yeah, I can try that. All right, just hold it up high and drop it on the floor. <laughs> Holy crap, that was a really long call. I'm going to edit that one down because she said so many slogans. That one went on for over, I think, like 12 minutes or something. So I'm going to take most of what she said out and just leave the really funny things in there. But she said pretty much anything I wanted her to say. And so did a lot of other people on that show, episode 432, that happened earlier this year. I'm putting a link in the show notes to each of these shows, well, most of them anyway, the ones where I know which show it is. So if you want to hear the entire episode, you can. That has many more employees doing slogans for various corporate companies, but I'm going to edit that one way down so we can fit more calls into this episode. We're almost finished, you guys. I, I thought I'd be able to put more calls into this episode, but maybe not. Not unless I want to make a three-hour show. This just means I'm going to have to save all of this stuff for episode 600, which will also be a best of show, maybe. Speaking of best of shows, if you like all of the calls that you hear on the Snowplow Show, I started doing this other show called Mr. Dobelina's Wonderful World of Prank Calls, which is pretty much just like this show. Every episode, I try to play only the funniest prank calls from the Snowplow Show and occasionally from other shows, not very often, not as often as I'd like. But I just try to feature my favorite prank calls, either my own or other people's. And you can find those over at worldofprankcalls.com or by searching on your podcast app or wherever else you get podcasts from for Mr. Dobelina's wonderful world of prank calls. I highly recommend that show if the Snowplow Show is just too much for you. Every episode is around 30 minutes or so, and I try to only put the best calls in that show. Be sure to check that out. Next, we are going to call this old guy that is very upset about the phone company's latest service offering. He thinks it's kind of bullshit that the phone company is going to start calling him and letting him know that he doesn't have any phone calls, which I don't know why. Seems like a great service to have if you have a home phone. You can make sure your home phone is still working and everything. Yeah, what do you want? Hey, Harry. Don't hey, Harry. What do you want? Hey, don't, don't, don't get all impatient with me. I'm trying to let you know something. Well, speak. All right. I'm calling from AT&T. I'm just calling to let you know that there are currently no phone calls coming in to your house. What do you mean? Well, you know, like uh, sometimes the phone rings and sometimes it doesn't. And besides my call, right now it's not ringing. There are no incoming calls. So everything's fine. You, do, you don't need to be picking up your phone. And uh, if you do get a call, it will ring. <laughs> I just talked to my sister less than an hour ago. I know, I know. Back then you had a call. You're making a phone call. Now there's no calls. I'm just letting you know, this is a new service we provide. We're going to be calling you every hour to let you know that there are no calls. I don't want any calls. I get enough calls on this goddamn telephone. Oh, you don't have to yell at me. No, this is just a new service we provide. I don't need a new service. I got enough for this. We're, we're going to call you every hour, though, just to let I you... I don't want you calling me every hour. That way you'll know that your phone's working, but there's just no calls coming in. Listen... I pay ninety dollars enough, and it's enough. I don't need any more service. And if you keep this up, I'm going to disconnect the goddamn phone. Ninety dollars just for phone service? Yes. Well, what is this? Nineteen eighty nine? You know we what have. What is this? Nineteen eighty nine. We have better plans than ninety dollars for phone service. What do you? I don't want all this other crap. I have other providers. That's the problem. Oh, okay. I don't want any of this crap that. You sell for TV and all that. Yeah, no, no. Like, yeah, fuck TV. I don't want your network. Yeah, I don't want any of that crap. Fuck TV. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm just, why are you paying $90? I think you got swindled. Well, that's, that's from AT&T. That's a crazy price. Yo, well, it's not my department, so don't blame me. No, I'm not blaming I'm, you. I, I just pay the bill. Okay, yeah, I'm just letting you know that there's no phone calls, and I will call you back in one hour to let you know if there's still no phone calls. Please don't call me. No, you interrupt me already doing lunch. Well, uh, well, you can eat lunch while we talk. 
Why do I need to have phone calls? Oh, well, you don't need to. That's what I'm saying. There are no phone calls right now. I, I don't need no goddamn call from you. Oh, don't you fucking curse at me, motherfucker. You know, I'll take you right to the management. That's what I'll do. Oh, no, you I won't. I don't want any phone calls and leave it at that. All right. Well, I'm going to let you know that you don't have phone calls. Great. But, don't call me back again. Well, no, I have to. In one hour, I'm going to call you back again and let you know. Call me one hour and I'm calling the police. Oh, no, you won't. Well, oh, yes, I will. No, we'll turn off your phone if you're going to be like that. No, you won't. I'll block your number from calling the police because I'm the phone company. I don't care who you are. Yeah, you won't be able to call the police. I'll, I'll, I'll put in my computer here. Cannot dial 911. Why do I need phone calls called to me? Tell me. Just to let Tell you, me a good reason. To let you know that there's no phone calls. It's a new service, idiot. I don't need any phone calls. I know. I don't care about your new service. Okay, well, no. Everything is new, I get charged for. You don't, no, 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 you're not getting charged for this. We're just going to call you every hour at the top of the hour. I won't answer the phone. Okay, well, I'll leave a message on your machine. No, you won't. Yes, I will. What are you going to do, turn it off? Well, who knows? I'll set you up with AT&T voicemail, and I'll leave it there. Why are you so hard to deal with? Well, it's a new department. I'm I'm kind of new at this. I just you're you're making this really difficult. I don't know why you have to be such an asshole. Oh, I, the reason is I don't want any more phone calls. Okay, well you're being such an asshole about it. I just don't understand why you're being such an asshole. Because I get all these calls from Nikor and everything trying to sell things, and I get fed up with it. Oh well, I'm not selling anything, so don't blame me for that. Oh, I know. I'm just telling. I don't need any more phone calls. Okay. All right. Well, this is going to be a non-phone call. When I call you in an hour, just to let you know that there's no phone calls. What does that tell me? It tells you that there's no phone calls and, and that your service is still working. There's just no phone calls. Why do you have to do it every hour? Uh, I don't know, because every 30 minutes, that's ridiculous. We wouldn't be able to keep up because we're calling everybody. Probably once a day is better. No, no, no. It's, I think every hour, and pretty soon it's going to be automated. We're going to automate the system. You mean to say this phone's going to ring in the middle of the night? Yes, definitely. But I think we're going to set up an automated system soon, and it'll tell you that there's no phone calls, and then it'll tell you about special deals from AT&T. You know, this is getting a little ridiculous. Well, you're ridiculous. I mean, this this is supposed to be just like you're a... You're telling me I'm going to be getting a call every hour during the night, and you're going to interrupt me from sleep and all this? Yeah, yeah, just to, so you know that your phone's still working, but there's no calls coming in. You know, it's it's a, it's a it's a convenience. What's a convenience? You know, just knowing. No, I know you're trying to be nice about it, but it's a pain. No, it's not a pain. No, you don't even have to worry about it. Like, it'll just the calls will just come in, and you pick up. But but next time, next time I call an hour from now, how about we don't just, ar let's not argue about it. It'll just be like a 10-second phone call. Just be like... I'm very concerned about these overnight calls. That's what I'm concerned about. I'll just be like, hey, Harry, there's no phone calls right now. And next time you won't be like, don't hey, Harry, me, you son of a bitch. Next time you'll just be like, okay, thank you. Click. What, what is it going to tell me there's no phone calls? So that I don't you, understand this. So that you know, because there's no way to know when there's no phone calls. It's not My like people are disconnecting their landlines and and going to a cell phone only. Yeah, you know what? If you have a cell phone, you won't get all those telemarketing calls. They don't exist on cell phones. That's right. Yeah, I, that, I get once in a one once in a while, but that's it. Yeah, I don't understand why you even have a landline. It's kind of weird, really. You know, reason one reason because of my Direct TV. Oh, <laughs> wow, that sounds like a scam. Oh, is that why you're paying $90? Because you have DirecTV? No, TV? that has nothing to do with DirecTV. Oh, you that's just, just said my phone it bill. Oh, that's weird. Wow, you should call the phone company and have that. Uh, it shouldn't cost well, they more. They have no plan other than if you want to sign up for all their other services, and I don't want any of the other uh, services. They're lying. They're such liars. Those people over in, sale, in the sales department, they're motherfuckers. Well, I don't know. I but do. I don't care who you get. They they have the same story. Oh, I hear your clock in the background. It's the top of the hour. That means one hour till I call you again. Okay, well, listen, I really have other calls to make. I got to call a bunch of other people. Yeah. So I should really let you go. It's been fun, though. 
No, it hasn't been fun because I, I'm not looking forward to this. I'm just being polite. It, it was. It's really. This isn't fun for me. This is just a job. It's minimum wage. Okay. This Bye. is this is hell on earth for me, sir. All right. Bye. So you're doing much better than me when you think about it. Then again, I get paid for this. You don't. <laughs> Good for you. All right. I'm glad I made you laugh. Okay. Bye. Bye. Wasn't that nice? He laughed at the end. Him and I finally saw eye to eye. We're like besties now. I'm pretty sure that's just a guy that I called randomly out of a phone book. Listeners are always sending me phone books to call numbers out of because, weirdly enough, phone books still exist. Here's another one to some old people where I'm promoting an amazing new service. This one by Amazon and their new drone delivery service. Hello? Hello, Catherine? No. Joan? Yes. Oh, hey. Uh, this is Dave from Amazon. I just needed to let you know that there's a delivery on the way. From Amazon? Yes. Yes, it's uh, it's gonna be on the w- it's gonna be there today, and it's gonna arrive by by a delivery drone. It's gonna come, you know, from the air, from the sky, in in a hel- in a helicopter. There, there, you're gonna get a delivery today from Amazon, and it's gonna it's gonna arrive in a small helicopter thing. Let me let you talk to my daughter. I don't believe that. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Catherine. Yeah. Hey, uh, this is Dave from Amazon. I just needed to let you guys know that there's a package on the way today. And it'll be arriving uh, before 5 p.m. today. All right. Um, And it's going to arrive via a delivery drone, one of those uh, helicopter-looking things with the package. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh So we just need you to open up all of your upstairs windows so it can fly in and drop it off. Oh. Oh. We don't. We can't do that. No, just tell. We f- can't open up all our windows. Well, just most of them then. It's got to find an open window so it can come in the house and bring in your package. No. Oh. Yeah, it does. That's how it works. That, that's how this. No, 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 no. What? Uh, our house isn't set up that way. We can't open our windows. What? Why? Why can't you open the windows? Did you board them all up or something? No, we didn't burn them up, but they've swollen shut oh. because of the moisture. Well, just just use a hammer. Do, oh, do, if you have a hammer, can you just <laughs> knock out all the glass? No. For a scam, one or the other. No. A scam? How would it be a scam? We're sending you a package. Okay. Um, but we can't open our windows. Oh. So I didn't know what to do. Do you have a hammer? Could you just knock out all the glass in one of the windows? No, we can't knock out the glass in the window. Well, you know, no. Just, but it's got to be able to get in. Like how? It's a, it's a joke. I am. I'm. I'm sorry. I. I. We'd like to cooperate, but we uh, can't do that. Okay, well, um, how about your chimney? Does your chimney have a cover on it, or can it just come through the chimney? Yes, it has a cover on it. Oh, and you don't have a fireplace? Uh, we do have a fireplace, but it can't come down the how about, how about? It has a cover. How about the garage? Can you open the garage? Yeah, or wait. but what will it... Oh, it'll just... What, go- will it, what will it do once it comes in the garage? It's... Pr- <laughs> It's, it's, it'll probably just look around, make sure it's indoors, and it'll, it'll set your package down on the nearest table. And it'll, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll go through this whole s- spiel. Um, it'll say thank you, and it'll sing this Christmas song. It's just doing it. Oh, my God. Joan just never shuts up, does she? Well... I know that you're trying to do the uh, delivery of the with the drones, but mm-hmm. um, I just I, I I can't imagine why you can't have it set down on the front porch. Oh, that that's the post office's territory. They they, they own the rights to your front porch. The post office does. Uh, what about on the roof? Can you guys get on the roof? No, we can't get on the roof. Well, you. you you just step out on a window, you know, just step out a window up on top, one of the dormers. No, no, no. 
No, I don't. I don't know no, who you are. It's fine. Just, I, just I, I, I don't believe you. No, no. Well, that's weird that you wouldn't believe a call from Amazon. But anyway, just tie tie a rope around Joan's waist and just have her go out on the roof and pick it up. You know. Do you know she's eighty five years old? I'm not going to have her do that. Well, she could probably use Get a little bit of. of your- she could use a little bit of exercise. I don't. I don't- it just kind of ends there. I don't know if they hung up or what. But man, Joan was awesome in the background. She sounds like a really fun mother. She's got a good sense of humor, unlike the other lady. A few years back, I used to make a lot of calls to gym customers because it was really easy to call up certain large chains of gyms and say, hey, girl at the counter, this is the corporate office. I need you to look into your computer and tell me the phone numbers of everybody that's checked in there right now. And the girl would be like, okay. And she'd read me the names and the phone numbers and, you know, anything I asked for, basically. And we'd have so much fun with that. I'd do live shows with those numbers. And we'd call up people at the gym and accuse them of just completely ridiculous things. And it's still possible to do that, of course. It's very easy, in fact. But I've stopped doing that ever since the incident where the FBI raided my house over prank calls. But at some point while doing all of that stuff, I made the series of calls called how to lose weight the patterson way and i would call up gym customers and i would say hey the manager of our gym has written a book about weight loss and you are required to buy it and why am i telling you all this why don't i just play the call the show's long enough already what the hell am i doing here here's the call hello hello soria yeah hey this is kevin from the the gym Uh uh-huh and uh, i just wanted to let you know like uh our we have a new manager here the gym's under new management um, the uh-huh. man, the manager's name, I don't know if you've heard of him, his name's Frank Patterson. Mm-hmm. And, oh, okay, you've heard of him? Yeah, he's the author of the book, uh, How to Lose Weight the Patterson Way. And, okay. Uh, he's just he's le- making us call everyone and let them know that we're going to be charging you for a copy of the book, and you'll get, you'll get your book when you come in next time. You'll, you'll get it. It's a hard copy. It's $29.95. Oh, no, I'm not interested. And, oh, oh, no, he's no. making it mandatory. Like, everyone that's a member here has to have a copy of the book. Okay, well, I will talk to him tomorrow and do not charge me for something I didn't request. Well, no, it's it's in your so, contract, and we've already charged no, you. I don't see. Like, if you, no, look, if you look on your... No, ca- I'll let you talk to my husband. Okay. Let you talk to my husband. Oh, that sounds great. Hello? Hello, this is Roy from the gym. Okay. Now, you're saying that you're going to take... Uh, that you have already taken money from my wife's... Our account? Yeah, yeah, we've already took, what you're saying? We've, we've already taken it. It's been charged. And the next time she comes in, we're going to give her a copy of the book. It's by our oh, name. Oh, well, no. Well, we're going to have to decline that. We're going to have to go and call our bank up and tell them to decline that, that money order or that or that charge. Oh, there's because no, there's because no, we didn't, there was nothing in our contract that said that we had a mandatory. And what gives you the right to go into our account and pull that money out. You have no right. Don't you know that you can get sued for that? No, oh, we cannot. No, Frank Patterson, he's the new manager, and he redid the contracts. It says we, he can charge for his book. It's mandatory. And and that no, way it'll help I'm her. I'm sorry. Look, I'm sorry. No, my wife has no problem losing weight, buddy. Then why is she in the gym? Oh. Because she's staying fit. That's why. Okay. Well, this is. She looks very fit. Okay. She looks very good. So she doesn't need a book. Uh, I don't know about that. To. to yeah, but, no, don't tell me. But no, the book, it has stuff about staying fit also. He just, he wrote How to Lose Weight in the title because that just t- sells better, you know? I don't care. We don't want it. We didn't sign for it. It's a best-selling and, book in and, its category. I don't care. Amazon. I don't care. I don't care. We we didn't Look, sign up for that. It has, you have no right going into our account and taking money out of our account. Well, once you you read, can get in big trouble for that. Once you read I the book. I can tell you that right now. Once you read the book, you'll we change your mind. We don't want to read the book. Has, and we don't want the book. How many times do I have to tell you this? It has four stars, though, on, on Amazon. I it's, don't care if it's got four stars on Amazon. So it's a good it book. It can have ten and a half stars. Oh, no, it can't, because it only goes up to five stars. You must not be a, a I reader. You, I don't you, care. I don't care. Well, read you a did lot. the wrong thing. I need to know your name. Uh, my name is still Roy. It hasn't changed in the last two minutes. What is it? Roy. R O Y. It's not a hard name to remember. What's the last? What's the last name? Zerbel. But look, it's already been charged. There's no reason to argue. It's in the contract. Oh no, we're gonna stop that payment. Trust me. Well, no, it's you it's already no gone right. through. We don't, want, we don't. 
we don't like anybody going in our our well, account. Well, we have you can ask to. any 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 American. You you can ask any American. You have no right to go into our bank account and pull money out without asking our permission. How dare you? No, we have your permission. It's in the contract. No, you do not have your you. No, you do not have our permission. Oh, we definitely. I'm telling you, you do not have our permission. No. You, you understand? You just need to read the new contract, sir. No, I'm sorry, man. You you guys blew it big time. What are you, you talking about? You guys blew about? it big time. I didn't blow you shit. You guys blew it big time, and I'm going on Yelp, and I'm going to let everybody know exactly what you oh, guys, nobody what reads you idiots those. did. Nobody reads Oh, yeah, I'm going to do whatever it takes to stop what your, oh, your stupid you're so, uh, robbing of our finances. You're so dumb. Who Come do on. you think you are? Kiss you, what? You can't do it. What did you say to me? Uh, you're being. What kinda, did you say to me? I'm trying to tell you. You're dumb. You're what being, did you say to me? You're, I told you twice now. You're really dumb. You're being dumb. Stop being so dumb. Oh wow, dude! You got a lot of nerve, bro. Well, you're the you one. You got a lot of nerve, man. a tantrum. I, you got a lot of nerve. You really do. How dare you? Okay. I'm trying to tell you. How dare you? I don't see where your Take problem is. Take money from my account. We have permission. It's and in the contract. No, you do not have permission. You do not have our permission. The contract says we do. You do not have do. our permission. You didn't read the contract all the way through is the problem. No. You you know what, dude? You, look. You, how do you spell your last name? Look, the reason I'm calling is because I want to know if you want to buy a second. Spell your last name. Buy, do you want to buy a second copy for like a family spell member? Spell your last name. Or a friend, maybe? Spell your last name. G E R B I L. I don't know why you're being such a jerk about it. I mean, nobody else is acting like this. You need to take a chill pill. That's what you need. You know what? Give me your give me your fucking account number, idiot, and let me go and pull out some money out of your account. Well, you and see how you feel. You don't. Uh, you, I didn't sign a how contract. How would you feel if I did that to you? Well, that'd be uh, that'd be illegal. How but, would you feel if I went into your your bank account and pulled out money without your permission? That'd be illegal. How dare you talk to me like that, you fucking asshole? I didn't sign a you contract. You want your ass kicked? Oh, we didn't oh. sign no contract for you to pull money out no, of you, our account. Maybe you're you we don't know about. We didn't do that. And quit talking to me like that before I go over there and do something about it, you idiot. Like what? What did I say? What is your problem, Roy the the retarded boy? Who do you Ouch. think you are pulling out money out of our account? You just crossed the line, Don't you man. think we could stop that, idiot? Come on. Don't you think we could stop that? You're, huh? You're hurting me. Stop, please. Fuck it. And there's where he hung up. Can you believe that? He used the retarded word. You can't use the retarded word. That's politically incorrect. I never use the retarded word. Hey, Brad, it's Cisco Kid. Hey, Cisco hey, I Kid. I just congratulate you on uh, reaching 500 episodes of the Snowplow Show. Thanks, Cisco and Kid. And a brief little story. So after work, me and co-workers go to a parking lot, and we all hang out and talk bullshit and whatnot. That's great, Cisco and Kid. And somebody actually shared a YouTube video of the old What's Your Bid show. And Holy I just had crap. to stand there, you know, holding in my excitement and whatnot, you know, pretending I had no idea what this was as they're all giggling and laughing at all the crazy cactus cactus calls and whatnot. And, I and you're probably just sitting there, standing there, reciting it verbatim or mouthing the words to every single joke. My, uh, my PLA ID card as well as my Roy New Mexico badge and everything. And, oh, man, I, I just dropped all the PLA knowledge on them briefly, yeah. of course. And, you uh, schooled uh, those stupid motherfuckers. They're like, wait, who's this guy? I'm like, yeah, he's, he's doing it. Still doing it to this day. He's been doing it for like 20, 25 years or yep. something. So yep. that was just really That's me. cool. All right, Brad. Take care, man. Peace. Thanks, Cisco Kid. So even though the show's running way too long, I'm going to do a couple voicemails. Why not? Because this is a part of the show. I don't want to be misleading to the new listeners that are listening to this best of show. And I'm only going to play the ones where I can see in the transcript of the voicemail that they mentioned something about 500 episodes. So it's not going to be very many voicemails, just a few. Hey, Brian Carter, Matt the manager. I've been hey, called in since Matt. that uh, infamous 404 episode. I got out of jail finally. Um, That's great. I want to take the moment, if you're doing voicemail on the 500th episode, to promote Nick Caesar. Hell what yeah. What an amazing artist. I know. Everybody should go to his webpage at scary-art.com. Don't forget the damn dash. Yeah, it's right? scary-art.com. It's not a dash. 
It's a minus, and that makes it okay. Everybody should go join and look at Nick Caesar's amazing work. Do it now. Yep, I agree. And uh, buy something for the 500th episode. That's right. Anyway, and of course, get onto Brad's Patreon and whatever. Yeah, do that first. I um, only have one area code for you today. Area code is 401. What area is that? Maryland. So have a great day. Congratulations so on 500 smart. episodes. Keep going and another 500 to come. Thanks, Matt, the manager. And yes, hell yes, Nick Caesar at scary-art.com. If you look at today's show art, it's by Nick Caesar. He does a ton of art for the show, absolutely free of charge. He does a lot of stuff for the prank call community just because he loves prank calls. He loves listening to prank calls while he makes art. And he has a Patreon too. I don't want to go crazy promoting URLs and stuff. So just go to scary-art.com. And I'm sure his Patreon is listed on there. He's also got a Spreadshirt shop where you can buy a lot of the art that you see on these episodes. Probably the one on today's episode is probably a t-shirt. So go to scary-art.com, minus as in hyphen, and check out Nick's work. He does some really amazing stuff, and he's been doing art for the Snowplow Show for years now. Thank you, Nick Caesar, for doing that. And thank you to all of the other people. There's other people that have sent art in, people that have drawn things for the show or taken pictures for the show, people that have made music for the show. Like that intro song that you heard today, that was made by a musician. His name is JD, and he's made some really great stuff for the show. A lot of people have. That's what I love about this show. There's so much material that is featured on this show that is by other people. All these people just contributing to the show in all these different ways. I mean, there's the supporters, of course, that support the show over on Patreon. But besides that, there's people that send in lists of numbers and they send ideas for me to do on the shows. Not just prank calls, but other ideas, just all kinds of stuff like this show. This show is 100 percent ideas from other listeners telling me which calls I should put on this show. Basically, I'm not even a prank caller. I'm an editor slash producer of a show where I take phone numbers that you give me and ideas that you give me and artwork that you give me, and I edit it all together into one show that you've created. So thank you, everybody, for contributing so much to this show and making this show what it's become today. I'm very happy with the direction that the show has gone and is going, and it's all thanks to you people. Crap, I don't think there's any more voicemails congratulating me on 500 episodes. God damn it, listeners. Why didn't you leave me more voicemails? Okay, I'm just going to play one more. Here's one more voicemail, and then we're done with them. Brad, it's Aaron. Hey, okay, anyway, Aaron. Um, I needed to tell you something real quick. Aaron from I not Iowa. I've been to old Snowplow Show episodes at work this week. Mm-hmm. And there was one show you did maybe like three or four years ago. I think it was a Yelp call, and it was to a guy in Des Moines, Iowa. where There's a lot of Yelp happening in this show. I called that guy that checked in on Yelp. And then the Roy, the retarded boy guy, threatened to make a bad Yelp review of my gym. And now this. I'm from, originally. And he checked in at a place called El Bait Shop, and you called him, and you were like, hey, I'm with security, and I see you shoving worms into your pocket. The reason that he was so confused is because that place isn't an actual bait shop. It's like a bar, oh. and it's just called El Bait Shop. That's Oops. why That's why it was really fucking with Silly him. me. But... I thought that was funny. I just wanted to share that with you. I guess it was. Um, that's all. Bye. All right. Bye, Aaron. I don't remember that call at all. Hopefully it wasn't terrible, but, you know, at least you were amused by it. You should tell us all where it's located at. Anyway, that's enough of the voicemails. I have fully edited this show all the way up until 57 minutes. So I know the show is going to be at least 57 minutes long. I kind of wanted to keep it around an hour, but I guess it's going to be closer to 90 minutes. But that's okay, right? I'm just going to play a few more calls here, and we're going to end the show. One that quite a few people recommended that I play on this show is the Trick Ass Ho call from the grocery store complainer thing, which is one of the calls that got me into some legal trouble a couple years ago, and I am still dealing with today. So let's play that one. That one is 10 minutes long, though. I'm sure I'm going to cut it down a little bit. Maybe we'll just play half of this. But this is a call where I had access to customer complaints at a few grocery stores and I was able to read their complaints and then call them up and respond to their complaints. And I did not do a very good job at resolving their complaints. Hello? Hello, Don? Yes? Hey, Don. It's Roy. I'm the manager here at the Albertsons. At Albertsons? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you filled out the online complaint thing and I was just calling to resolve your issue. Oh, 
Yeah, I didn't. You didn't need to call me, but okay. Oh, why didn't I need to call you? Well, I just thought it was a survey. Oh, what? You're okay with uh, complaining about our employees on online, but you're afraid to do it over the phone or in person? Why couldn't you just talk to a manager in the store? Excuse me. Why couldn't you just talk to the manager in the store instead because, of? Because um, I was getting ready to. Um, I had to be somewhere. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, you sound really important. Like, wh why are you just a coward and and you only want to do it online? Hide behind your computer? No. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? Uh, sounds like I'm talking to Don, the the fucking complainer. Is this a joke? No, it's not a joke. I, I don't appreciate you um, talking shit you, about my you employees. You said the F word to me, oh, and oh, you're oh. calling me from the store oh, so I can't because say, I'm a fucking complainer? I can't say yeah, the F word? I have, been in, I have been in that store a million times, and this woman is the same way every single time. Is this the one that you're saying, this associate has an arrogant attitude and is bitchy every time I've been to the store? Yes. So you can say bitchy, but I can't say fucking... Is that how it works? Okay, are you, are, okay, so I can fill out this thing that like a you coward. guys asked us to fill out. Like the coward you online. are. Online. Fucking coward. Yeah, go ahead. I bet you can. This is a joke, right? No, it's not a joke at all. I'm trying to resolve your issue. Okay, so you're calling me a fucking coward, and you're calling from the store, and you want to resolve the issue. Well, it seems obvious you're a coward. Are you like, kidding me? Like you Are just, you kidding me? You could have just talked to the manager while you're there. I, I, I work for a company that I've worked for for 24 years, mm -hmm. and if I called somebody and said that to them, who the hell do you think you are? What? That didn't make you sense. You work at the Albertsons in... in. Correct, yeah. Yeah, I'm the manager and, here. And, and you're telling me... So, okay, I want your name, I and I you. will go into the store, and I will talk to the manager, oh, you probably won't. and I will tell him what you said. You're probably just going to fill out another anonymous online survey on your computer. Oh, hell no. Not when somebody calls me on my phone when I'm on my lunch break when I'm working and calls me a fucking coward on my phone. Yeah, well, I cursed You've because you cursed. You've got to be kidding me. You said the word bitchy in your, in your complaint. Yeah, yeah. So? Yeah, so, 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 um, exactly, uh, so. Have, yeah, so, but in your customer service uh, person that's going to try and resolve issues, and then you're going to call the person who filled out the complaint a fucking coward. Yeah, and a trick-ass hoe. Write that down, trick-ass hoe. So, um, oh, my God, what is wrong with you? I'm just trying to resolve the complaint. You said she was speaking... you got to be shitting me. You called me a trick-ass hoe and you're trying to resolve the complaint? Are you... Now, are you fucking kidding me? No, I, I was now, trying to resolve now, things. Now, you started you're going to tell attitude. me that you would talk to me. If you were standing in front of the CEO of Albertsons, you would talk to me the way you're talking to me right now? Yeah, hey, I'd punch I him in the nuts. I don't bullshit on your ass. Oh, whatever. Because fucking nobody talks to people like that when they work in customer service. Whatever happened to you, um, I'm sorry, what can we do to make this experience better for you? Oh, welcome to 2016, ma'am. Are you fucking kidding me? You're calling me a trick-ass hoe? And don't forget, this is, okay, yeah, 2016. So I've got your phone number locked into my phone now. What does that mean, locked in? Uh, it's on my redial. It's not blocked, so oh. I can call it back. Well, I don't care. It's the store's number. You can call the store anytime you want. Just try not to be a bitch when you talk to people like, you know, you were with that cashier. I didn't even talk to her. What? Well, maybe that's the problem. She, she, Ma she, maybe. She, was, she was continuing on a conversation with the guy she had already checked out, which she does every single time. And the only thing I got from her was, are you playing the Monopoly game? Probably because you're no fun to talk to, because listen to yourself. Of course she's going to talk to other people. Are you, you wanna... kidding? Are you kidding me? She doesn't want to talk to... You call me a trick-ass hoe and call me a fucking coward, and you're going to turn this and blame this on me? You've got some wonderful associates in that store. I know we do. This All woman of them is are. not one of them. I, no, she is. She just doesn't like you. Uh, Okay. So, I mean, that's but not... But I, I, I doubt... How would she even know who I was? Well, she just doesn't like your attitude. She doesn't know you personally. She doesn't want to either.
I'm just saying, you know, maybe she doesn't talk to you because you're not fun to talk to. Because you just yell at people and, and curse. No, I don't. I was standing in line with my son. Oh, so, so. Yeah, I'm upset now. I'm upset now because you called me a trick asshole. So that's what the, do you think's going to happen? Th that's the only. Are you fucking stupid? That's the only I reason. Mean, what the fuck do you think is going to happen when you call a perfect stranger on the phone? You're not a stranger. And you say what you said to me. What do you think's going to happen? So the only reason you didn't. Uh, no, you answer you, my question. You weren't a bitch at her because because you were with say, your son. No, you know you're not answering my question. So who's the coward? How do you expect somebody to respond? She turned it around on me, didn't she? So that one goes on for another four minutes, but I think I'm just going to cut it off right there. I will put a link in the show notes if you want to hear the rest of that call. It's the one called Trick Ass Ho. Let's see. I just want to do a couple more here before we end the show. So I'm looking at the suggestions here. We've got a good Tenants from Hell prank here. Something about an indoor pool leak. And all right, so Tenants from Hell, that's been something that's been happening on the Snowplow show since the very beginning, where we call up apartment managers or landlords and we pretend to be tenants of theirs and we tell them that we've done just completely insane things inside of the apartment building. Like we removed all of the carpet and we covered the floors with pennies and the walls and the ceilings, or we put a fire pit in the living room or we knocked out a couple of walls, or we knocked out the wall in between my apartment and the apartment next door because I'm dating the girl next door, and we just wanted to make it easier for us to go back and forth between each other's apartments without having to put our shoes on. Or my bed bug farm aquarium got knocked over. Don't you hate it when that happens? Man, what else? So many things. I've been doing that one forever. The tenants from hell thing. Uh, flushing things down the toilet. Flushing sand down the toilet. Like, where did all the sand come from? Oh, it's sand from the floor of my apartment. I've covered the entire floor in sand. So it's more like a beach atmosphere. I think that was the original Tenants from Hell call based on a toothpaste for dinner comic strip. But here's one that was suggested. This one is called Indoor Pool Leak. Good afternoon. Park Apartments. This is Therese. How can I help you? Hello. Um, I have a, I'm a tenant here. I just have a kind of a problem. Okay. Like, we, we turned our living room into a, a swimming pool. You know, we put plastic up on the walls and the floor and filled the whole thing up with water. Okay. And um, it was working good for a few weeks, but then um, it kind of sprung a leak over by where the oven is. So like, what actually did break? The the plastic. It got kind of... A, like, we turned on the oven. We wanted to make, like, a heated pool, you know? And then when we turned on the oven, it kind of melted the plastic enough to make the water start leaking through it. Are you being serious with me? Yeah, yeah, and we're just, we're having a hard time containing the leak, and we're trying to keep the pool filled up, too, but it seems like... Inside your, in, inside your unit? Yes, yes. We're trying okay, to keep, well, we're trying to keep it filled up, but we can't, we can't fill it up fast enough for the, because the water's leaking out too fast. What number do you live in? Uh, B204. B204, you're in a top unit, and you have a pool? Yeah, well, it's not a pool. We just we put plastic and you know on the floor and over the furniture and up on the walls. So like the the unit itself is filled with water. It's like up to the window height. It's like two and a half feet. So okay. Well, are you, so you're home now. Yeah, yeah. It's just. Um, do you guys pay for the water here? Yeah, we do pay for the water, okay. but you're not supposed to be having a pool in your apartment. Uh, it's not a pool. We didn't bring a pool in our apartment. We turned the apartment into a pool. With plastic. Yeah, but that's that's going to cause damage, and you're going to you can get charged for the damage that it's causing. Okay. Well, we didn't think it would cause damage. I mean, it was pretty. It was working really well for a couple of weeks, um, but just you know, with the oven, when we turned on the oven, it kind of melted. Okay. Well, we'll can we come up there and take a look at it to see what we need to do? Well, the problem is the the front door doesn't open because the water is pushing against it. There's too much water pressure for the door to open anymore. Because, you know, it's like two feet of water pushing against it. Or, or like the entire living room and kitchen area is all, it's all a pool now. Hang, hang on one second. No, we need it. Well, somehow we're going to have to get the door open to get the water out. Because if we don't, it's going to leak downstairs. Well, no, we don't want the water out. Like, we're, we're running the water right now to try and keep it filled up. But we can't seem to keep up with it because it's leaking out too fast. Yeah, because you have a leak in your plastic. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Like, do you have anything, like any, like a cock gun, or maybe, uh, 
sheet of plywood, I think that would kind of plug it up. Cause we I don't, don't think that's going to work. You, you can't have, you can't make a homemade pool in your apartment. Well, we, we, did, we did. It worked. It works just fine. It's just, Obviously not if it's leaking and you've got two feet of water and you can't get the door open. I know, but no, we just go out the window. That's why we don't have it up, up any higher than the windows. You go um, out the window? Yeah, because the doors won't open anymore because there, there's water pushing up against them. Okay, well, we're going to need to get in there somehow to get that door open because you have damage in that unit and all that water is going to leak downstairs below. I don't think it's any damage. I think it's just a little bit of water in the kitchen that's leaking out. Two feet of water, any damage? Well, but there's plastic up everywhere. It's not hurting anything. It's just... Well, we're going to come up there and look to see if we can get in. We do have a call gun, but we're going to see what kind of damage is happening. You have a what? But down below is going to have probably water going into their unit. Water falls down. It goes down. It's got to go somewhere. It's going to have to leak somewhere. It's probably just... it's going to leak downstairs. It's probably just in the walls or something, because they haven't complained... Like yeah, gonna, but if it goes into the walls and it and it doesn't dry right, we're going to have mold. You're going you can get charged for a lot of damage that this is causing. Well, there's no damage in our unit. It would be downstairs. They should have to pay for the damage. Why? You're the one that made the pool. I know, but the water's down there. It's not up here. It's it's all because con- you caused it. It's all contained up here. It's everything's fine up here. Obviously, it's not contained if you have a leak in that plastic and you have two feet of water sitting in your unit. I don't we're gonna, see the we're problem. Gonna be, we're going to be coming up there. Oh, I have another question. Sure. Um, our our electricity, uh, like our lights, have been flickering for some reason. I don't know. I don't think that's related. But I mean, it's just like the lights are just flickering nonstop lately. Well, I could do, you know, do with the water. The you know the wires are connected to no, downstairs. No, no, no. This is this is the electricity. It's not the plumbing. I know you're a woman. You don't understand these things, but I'm a what? No, I'm just saying you're you're not a man. You don't understand like the difference. Excuse there's a di- me? there's a difference. There's electricity and then there's plumbing. One doesn't have anything to do with the other. It's the electricity. No, but the, that's their, their electricity is in the walls, and they're connected from downstairs to the their their wires are connected from downstairs. Yeah, they're to not upstairs. exposed wires, dummy. They're they're all they've got Excuse rubber. You, I'll be knocking on your door. Hang on one second. No, we'll be up at the door. we can't even open the if door. You do not. It, well, we're going to have to open it because you have water damage in the unit. There's nothing wrong with our unit. That's what I'm saying. It's fine in here. You said there's two feet of water in the kitchen. We want it that way. We, we've got plastic We cannot up. have it's, two feet of water in your kitchen. We just need someone to fix the, fix the electricity that's flickering. Well, we have to get in there to fix it, so we've got to have to open the door. Like, what kind of place is this if the electricity is flickering? That's kind of dumb. I mean, why can't you just have electricity that works? It was never like this before. Well, because probably because he didn't have a pool in there before. The pool has nothing to do with it. That's plumbing. This is electricity I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. We'll be well, not apparently your door not and opening it up. Apparently, no. You can't open it. If you open it up, you know what's going to happen. All the water is just going to rush out. You're going to cause damage, and then it'll be you've your already, fault. You've already caused damage, sir. No, we haven't caused any damage at all up here. You need to knock on the window. We'll open the window for you. We're not going to crawl through the window. Why not? Because that's not that is not the entry way to be going into. It is unit. now. As long as we live here, that's going to for the rest of the summer. That's the entry way into our apartment. No, it's not. Then, then you are you are destroying our property, and I'm going to. And I no, you cannot do this. We've no, already done it. And if anyone well, comes over, they need are, to take off their shoes because we don't want to damage the plastic on the floor. You are destroying our property, and that's not what 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 you're living here for is to destroy our property. We can. It's so, in our apartment. You can't tell us what to do inside of our apartment. It has nothing I to do with. You, you don't own that apartment. We do, and not you. No, but I pay rent, so it's mine. That's and all you're doing is paying rent in a space. You're an you idiot. What is wrong with you? You're so stupid. Well, I don't know what you're on, sir, but we're going to be knocking on your door. Yeah, Goodbye. go ahead. Don't open the door because guess what's going to happen. That call was based on the various actual news stories of people in apartments turning their apartment into a pool. That seems to happen more than you'd think. I don't think this would be a best of show if I didn't play at least one Planet Fitness call. So I guess I need to tell you a little bit about Planet Fitness if you don't know much about that company. It's a gym. It's a nationwide gym chain. And they have this policy where they shame their customers if they don't like the way that their customers are acting. They publicly shame them with an air raid siren that is on the wall 
And it's a light that spins around like a police light, a spinning blue strobe light with an air raid siren that says Lunk Alarm above it. They call it their Lunk Alarm. And when anyone in the gym acts like a lunkhead, they set off this alarm. And Carlito from the Madhouse Live show, he came up with a genius idea to call up Planet Fitness and trick them into setting off the Lunk Alarm. So that's become a regular thing on my show and his show and Dwight's show and the Party Time show, the XYZ show. All the prank call shows love doing Lunk Alarm pranks because it kind of turns it around on them. Instead of humiliating the customers, you're humiliating the employees that like to humiliate the customers because we get them to turn it on and leave it on. So that's what this next call is. This is me calling up a Planet Fitness and convincing them to set off the Lunk Alarm. Thank you for calling Planet Fitness. How may I help you? Hello, this is Bob from the corporate office with Planet Fitness. Hi, how are you? Hi, pretty good. Um, Were you having problems with your computer or your Lunk Alarm or any of the other networked things there? Um, no, uh, not that I know of. The uh, Lunk Alarm works fine and our system is up and running. Okay, are you near the Lunk Alarm right now? Like yeah. Because um, they're, they're wanting me, the IT department, they're saying they want to reset it. So uh, we need to just turn it on for about 30 to 60 seconds. And, uh, okay, so it, just leave it on? Yeah, just let it run. And, and if you could stay on the phone with me real quick, I'll let you know when to turn it back off. Okay, give but me one it, It's, it's going to be 60 seconds tops. Okay, all right, give me one sec. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, all right. Going. All right, yeah, I'm watching here on the computer right now. We'll see if it, it starts synchronizing. Okay. And recalibrating. All right, it sounds and, good. And other big words. <laughs> Are there many people in there right now? Um, not too many, just the regular afternoon rush. Like a dozen? Uh, yeah, we're like 12, 13. Oh, okay. That's a baker's dozen. Right. <laughs> Are they fat people? Sorry? Are they fat people or skinny people? They're... They're average people. Oh, okay. Give me one second. Give me one second. Okay. He's, he's got to deal with angry people. Hello. Who's who's this? Who is this? Who am I talking to right now? Well, I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm calling from the corporate office. Oh, you are? Mm-hmm. Okay. This is Jasmine. How may I help you? Oh, hey, Jasmine. Are you a manager there? No. The manager is currently out for the moment. She should be oh. back soon. Well, who are you? Like, what do you do there? Are you just a, a customer? I wouldn't be a customer if I was answering the phone. Well, you didn't answer the phone. He passed it over to you, smartass. Okay. Well, uh, you can call back when you would like to talk. Normally. Oh, well, hold on, Jasmine. Can you can you tell him that I'm just a prank caller? I was just pranking him and making yeah, him set I off. Yeah, I pretty the... much just figured that out. Did you? What yeah. What do you think of the prank? Uh, could be better. Really? I don't know. I think it's pretty hilarious because, like the the people inside the the place, they get all they 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 think it's weird. They get all nervous because the alarm's going off constantly. Okay. Well, I'm and handling a customer right now, so. Can you turn it back on? No, sorry. Please. Bye. Please. So that's a lunk alarm call. That's something you hear every once in a while on the Snowplow show and on every other prank show from time to time. It looks like that one was taken from the March 11th, 2015 episode of the Snowplow show. Speaking of other prank call shows, the Snowplow show, it's not the only prank show out there. There's a lot of good shows out there if you're interested in this sort of thing such as the Madhouse Live show at madhouselive.com. And then there's the Party Time show with Laugh Track Matt and Zax. You can find that one on mixlr.com slash prankcallnation. That's also where you can listen to Dwight's show, the Dwight the Janitor show. You can find a lot of his stuff by going on YouTube and searching for Dwight the Janitor. He does some really interesting things. And who else is there? There's Jag TV. He does a prank call show called The Purge. And, of course, there's calls of mass confusion that all of us get involved in, which is currently off the Internet, but I'm told we'll be coming back soon, eventually, maybe, hopefully. 
I don't know, actually. But look for that. Calls of Mass Confusion. That's some really good stuff we've done where we have hidden cameras in the places that we prank call or we do Skype-based pranks. It's a lot of fun. That one's organized by GAD. I guess basically this is the end of the show. I'm going to kind of end it here. I'm going to play one more prank, and then we're going to play a song by Reefer Badness right after the prank. So the regular listeners of the show, I'm sure they know which prank is getting ready to be played. This is a prank where a city in Arizona was installing these hidden cameras inside of a cactus, like all over the city, hidden cacti cameras. And it was a big deal on the news for a while. People were not happy about these cactus cameras watching them out in public. So I called up a few people in the city that this was happening in and said that I was with the city. And I can't remember what all was said. I was accusing people of speeding. I told one lady that we detected a gun in her purse and she couldn't have a gun. I told another lady that we were doing uh, x-rays of her body or MRI scans, I think maybe. And I told her she was healthy. She didn't need to go to the doctor. Congratulations on your clean bill of health. But this guy, this next guy, he is everyone's favorite. I told him we saw him throw his cup out the window. And his reactions are great. So here it is. Here is the Go Cup prank call guy, along with a song by Reefer Badness. Hello. Hello, Edward. How may I help you? Okay. Well, this is Roy from the city of Paradise Valley. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm pretty good. Hey, uh, we just uh, we caught you on one of our new cactus cameras uh, littering out the window of your car. Oh, that's and, not true. Oh, no, it is true, because we have your, your car, we have your license plate number, we have it on camera. We saw it happen from one of our new cacti. Well, is number it, one, I haven't driven my car through the town of Paradise Valley today at all. Well, I didn't say today, did I? Who is this? This is Roy from the city of Paradise Valley. Roy, would you identify yourself more? No. Why should I do that? Because I'm just asking a straightforward question, sitting here and relaxing. Oh, well, you don't sound very relaxed. I mean, as soon as I called, you're like, identify yourself. What do you want? You, like, bid my head off just for asking for you. Well. I'm, I'm just letting you know. That we, we've got our eye on you now. We're going to be watching that strike one. If you get three strikes, you're in trouble. You're going to get a ticket. A ticket for what? For, for littering. Uh, we could give okay, you a ticket sure. right now, but we're being nice. We're not going to give you a ticket. Well... I got news for you. I haven't driven in the town of Paradise Valley in 10 days. Maybe it happened 11 days ago. I don't usually ago. even go that way. It was 11 days ago, maybe. You ever think of that? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I think you're full of shit. You know you littered, and you're trying to make up excuses. You're trying to lie to me, but the cameras don't lie. We're watching well, I, every think... move you make from our new cacti. Yeah. So who is this? I already told you it's Roy. Okay. All right. Just so you know. Do you know who? Do you know who lives next to me? Who? Andy. Oh shit! Who's that? He just retired as the deputy chief of police for the city of Phoenix. Well, I'm going to give him this phone number and ask that uh, he give this to one of I his bet friends. The, I bet you're the most annoying neighbor ever. Like every little thing that happens to you, I'm going to get the deputy. He lives next door to me. We're good friends. You think you can just litter because the deputy's your next door neighbor? Is that it? Think you're above the law now? I think you have ADD. Why do you say that? Uh, because you have nothing else to do in your life other than turn around and call up and harass people for no reason. I'm not whatsoever. harassing you. I'm giving you. I'm just giving you a verbal warning. This is strike number one. This is my job. This is what I do for a living. Okay. This is what you do for a living. That's right. I'm in charge okay, of the cacti this is the program. Phone number of you at work. Yeah. And you work for the town of Paradise Valley. Yup. And your name is Roy. Yup. This isn't supposed to be such a big deal. This is just a friendly verbal warning. I'm just letting you know we saw you litter. And if you want to deny it, that's fine. But if you do it another time, we're going to give you a ticket. Okay. All right. I know Andy, by the way. You can tell Andy to suck a dick. I don't care about Andy. You think I'm afraid of Andy? Whoa. 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 You, you let Andy know I said that, too. Whoa. What, are you having a heart attack? What's going on? What was that noise you're making? Yeah, that hurt. Was that your O face? That hurt? I, I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about Andy. Oh. Uh, Can you just admit that littering's wrong and you won't do it again? First of all, littering is wrong and I don't do it. 
Well, why'd you do so it what then? What am I going to turn around and throw out of my car? My dog? No, you threw like a big gulp cup or something. No, I don't go to the go cup places, and I don't go out for coffee, and I don't throw the go cups out the window because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? I'm a diabetic, and I drink water. All right, you threw your if water you cup said, out the window. I don't have a cup. You just you cup it in your hands and drink it that way? No, I have a bottled water is what I do. Well, you can't throw the bottles out the window. I don't throw the bottles out the window. You can't throw anything out the window. It's literally... We've got our cacti on you. That's our new slogan. Is it your new slogan? Yeah, you've heard about our cacti, right? No, I haven't heard about your oh, cacti. Okay. You're you're too busy littering to keep up on current events. What? All right, I gotta go. I have other people to call and yell at. You do. Yep. Well, I'm gonna put an end to your calling. No, you're not. This is my job. This is what they pay me to do. Well, you're not gonna get a paycheck anymore either. Oh yeah, you're gonna have. You're your, not gonna be allowed to call up people and do what you just did. And I had the whole thing on record. Oh really? What What did you record? So your with? entire conversation has been recorded. And what kind of device did you use to record the call? My answering machine. Oh okay, I didn't hear it. Oh, I'm sorry that you didn't hear it. You know. Okay. You know, that's the way that it goes. You know, the... You know, it's illegal to record someone without their permission. This is a two-party state. You're violating well, state and federal laws, motherfucker. But you don't care about laws, because you just go around littering out your car window all the time. Think you can do things like that, because you've got a neighbor that's a ex-sheriff or whatever you said. You have ADHD. Yep, that's me. I don't me. need to turn around and, and do anything except make sure that uh, you get your meds. All right. Well, I got to pay for my meds by doing my job here. So for like the twelfth time now, I'm gonna let you go. Got uh, other people to call now. So bye. Enjoy your recording. Make sure you show it to your sheriff neighbor. Oh, by the way, there's a judge that lives two houses away as well. Oh shit. <laughs> now you got me really scared. Whatever will I do? I don't have the foggiest idea. All right. Littering's bad. Bye. I'm hanging up now. You can tell Andy to suck a dick. I don't care about Andy. You, you let Andy know I said that, too. Ooh. Ooh. What, are you Ooh. having a heart attack? What's going on? No, I don't go to the go cup places, and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go cups out the window, because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? I'm a diabetic, and I drink water. I don't have a cup. Bottled water is what I do. Well, you can't throw the bottles out the window. I don't throw the bottle, though. I don't go to the go-cup places, and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go-cups out the window, because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? You know who lives next to me? Andy Anderson. Oh, shit. He just retired as the deputy chief of police for the city of Phoenix. I'm going to give him this phone number and ask. I think you have ADD. No, I don't drink coffee, I don't even have a cup I drink bottled water so you need to back your facts up I'm a diabetic, need to watch my sugar count Coffee's not a beverage I drink when I'm driving about I never drop litter in my whole damn life If you see me sat in Starbucks, I'm content to use the Wi-Fi I didn't see no secret camera hidden in the cacti Andy Anderson is gonna fuck you up, wise guy I don't drink coffee, it's not my drink of choice I order spring water when I'm drinking with the boys Caffeine is mean to me, there's nothing to enjoy what do you say your name was again? Roy? I'm recording this call on my answering machine I assure you that it's working though you didn't hear a beep I'm gonna take this tape and fucking march it down the street Knock on Andy's door and get a hair by the chief of Phoenix please No, I don't go to the go cup places and I don't go out to the cup And I don't throw the go cup out the window because I don't have any You don't have any windows? I'm a diabetic and I drink water I don't have a cup Bottled water is what I do. Well, you can't throw the bottles out the window. I don't throw the bottle, no. I don't go to the go-cup places, and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go-cups out the window, because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? No, I don't go to the go-cup places, and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go-cups out the window, because I don't have any. 
You don't have any windows? I'm a diabetic and I drink water. I don't have a cup. Bottled water is what I do. Well, you can't throw the bottles out the window. I don't throw the bottles, no. I don't go to the go-cup places and I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go-cups out the window because I don't have any. You don't have any windows? Do you know who lives next to me? Andy Anderson. Oh, shit. He just retired as the deputy chief of police for the city of Phoenix. I'm going to give him this phone number and ask. I think you have ADD. I bet, you're, I bet you're the most annoying neighbor ever, like every little thing that happens to you. I'm going to get the deputy. He lives next door to me. We're good friends. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, I don't go to the places I and I drink water. Yeah. We've got our cacti's on you. That's our new slogan. Whoopee. Whoopee, whoopee, whoopee. I'm not enthused about any of it. <laughs>